Please join me in welcoming Lady Ross. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, and it's lovely to be back on this campus. Uh, last time I was here was just barely after the building had opened. Rosalind and I were just reminiscing about that. Uh, and it was a dinner that the principal then gave the night before to uh, honorary graduands and, uh, and others before the graduation ceremony the next day. And the building wasn't fully it didn't have all the bits in it yet, but, but we had a grand tour. Uh, and I remember the next day in accepting my honorary degree, I spoke about the importance um, to, to all of the, the graduands then, uh, the importance that whatever you do, that you should support find a way to support civic society, to do something beyond your day job, or to find a way through your job to help society. As I develop that theme today, I think it's pertinent that I'm speaking about corporate responsibility, about giving something back in a building that has won so many awards for its environmental credentials. You, you'll all know this better than I, but it's so impressive. Using a wood chip boiler, uh, design and management which optimizes heating, ventilation, and light. Um, the retractable roof, so, which I just learned about, so if it goes on fire, the smoke escapes. Um, it's, uh, it's absolutely wonderful. But this is so far the highest scoring uh, for building for sustainability in any UK university, and that's pretty impressive. And I think uh, I feel proud to be in Scotland and in Edinburgh and to know this is here. You all ought to feel very proud that this is the university that, that you're attending. This building really is corporate responsibility in practice, if you will. Today, I'll discuss my take on corporate responsibility, what it is, what it can look like, and why it's, I think it's so important to engage with this agenda. And because I work in business, I want to consider what it means in that context and why it matters, and especially right now. I'll also give you some insight into what my own organization is doing in terms of responding to the needs of underserved customers and communities. And I'll touch on Edinburgh's festivals, which I know is an interest for Queen Margaret, for all of you, but um, I contributed to a paper that uh, Professor Goldblatt was supervising last year. That's all right. <laughs> um, and, uh, and the author is here. I don't know where, where are you sitting, because you've just, uh, right here. <laughs> um, but uh, bringing things then back to my day-to-day -day role, I'd also like to share with you my vision for banking as we look ahead. And don't, don't go to sleep on that, because I won't say um, too much on that. Um, but my vision for banking as we look ahead is actually heavily influenced by my approach to corporate responsibility. But I shall start with a story that dates from the end of the last recession. This was in the 1990s in America, and I ran a division in my bank which was breaking new ground there, finding ways to finance development in economically deprived communities, very, very poor communities. Um, these were often major construction projects in communities where there was a dire need, a pent-up demand for new housing, and for also for infrastructure. In one case, our customer turned out, our, the bank's customer turned out to be a rogue developer. And really what I mean by that is he was a crook and eventually wound up in jail, but it was a, you know, not a good person to deal with. And when all this came to light, he had started building a project and then obviously left it. And we took an odd decision for a bank. We decided we had no obligation to do this. We would just have left it there, half built. But we decided not to do that. We decided to pick up his abandoned project, even in that state. And for the first time anywhere, a bank became a developer uh, as well as a financier. And this was for a retail park, uh, sort of shops and some offices in the South Bronx. Now, the South Bronx is the poorest congressional district in America. This was the first office and shopping center to be built there ever. Uh, this was in the 1990s. As a bank, as I say, we had absolutely no obligation to finish what this man had started, but we wanted to stem our losses if we could. That was a purely commercial motive. That was our business motive. We also didn't just want to turn our back in this community because we'd begun to get to know people there, and we just couldn't do that. So we were keen to improve the, the quality of life there, and we could do that, we knew, by providing shops, a local supermarket. There was no supermarket there whatsoever. We were going to build one, uh, and also some form of leisure outlet. So we made a plan to bring all this together in a way that made commercial sense to us, and we anchored the whole development with a major office complex for the local authority, all of it financed by us, but that helped make the financials work. The project led to 500 new jobs, and by working with the local development agency, we ensured a proportion of these went to the local population. And in the center of this development, we built a multiplex cinema, modern with big lobby, bright lights, popcorn machines, the sort of cinema that local residents only saw outside of their impoverished community. It was the mid-90s, and the first film to play there was The Lion King. Now, that was a new film out at the time, so you know, no surprises there. 
But what was extraordinary, Wilm attracted more viewers in the hard-bitten South Bronx than anywhere else it was shown in the whole of America that year. And that is extraordinary. You talk about pent-up demand for something. Now, why do I tell this story? And I've told it on many occasions because I think it, it, it carries a lot of messages. I think it demonstrates an integrated view of corporate responsibility, which is when I think it works best. The government describes CSR as the contribution of an organization to sustainable development. And I'd add some texture to that. Of course, it's about how organizations take account of their economic, social, and environmental impact in the way they operate. It's also about additional actions the organization can take, which address, address both its own competitive interests and the interests of wider society, and it does that at the same time. So its own business interests and society's interests at the same time. On a basic level, corporate responsibility is about putting back into society what you take out, and then some, so that society is not only sustained, it actually moves on.